Hi everyone, welcome back. This is video two in my mini series for my makeup brush collection. My last video I'll have linked in the description bar for you is all the brushes I've used to put my makeup look on that I'm wearing right now and also my Real Techniques brushes. Today um, I'm going to show you my Zoeva brushes and um, if we have time a little bit more. I have one, two, three, four, five, six Zoeva brushes. I thought I was being ever so clever getting these because they're not readily or easily available in the UK. I think I ordered mine on I want to say Beauty Crowd um, and I got them in two separate orders um, they're not natural hair uh, they're natural hair brushes they're not synthetic I'd never had natural hair brushes before um, other than ones I got from China but they didn't they, they they were completely scratchy and never really got used so these ones um, I just love the look of the design of them is so stylish, the handles are just lovely, the writing doesn't wear off which I appreciate because although Real Techniques are my favourite brushes, the writing on them, they do wear off and um, these ferrules are really shiny, they're just very expensive looking, I just feel a little bit fancy when I use them. They also wash nicely as you can see, they're, they go straight back to white and they always, oh, they always look a bit clean, I've got my Christmas presents stacked up here, sorry guys. Um, and they always look a bit, uh, they always look nice and clean, but they are a pain in the butt to wash. Um, so I'm used with, with my other synthetic brushes, just washing them and the job's done. These require more washing than my uh, synthetic hair brush, uh, brushes to get clean and also they need conditioner on them after they've been washed which adds another step so it's three times as hard to wash these brushes than it is for example my Real Techniques brushes or you know my elf brushes so they're not I don't prefer them to synthetic brush it, uh, bristled brushes um, also because I, d I think it is because they're um, natural hair they soak up more product um, so I find it harder to really pack on colour even with this brush which is the one I use for packing on colour I just feel like so much of the pa um, shadow gets lost in the brush and they're not as multi-purpose in the fact that I can't use them for cream products because that um, my understanding is that ruins natural hair brushes so I'll start with um, the one I probably use most often which is the 234 Look Smoky Shader. So this one as I say I use for packing on colour onto the lid so it, it does work nicely for that one. I think it's comparison would probably be the MAC, is it two, I want to say 239 but I'm not 100% sure. I actually don't own any MAC brushes but obviously they're quite famous. The next brush is the one um, that I think I got when I got that um, 234. And that is the 221 Lux Soft Crease. This is absolutely lovely. Um, it's so it's fluffy and um, the bristles are not too sort of dense and it's not there's a little bit giving it. Um, it's rounded. I do have a pinched version of it, which I'll talk about next. But I really like this for blending work. Um, so I've tried to put colour on with this before and it's just a bit too messy because of the size of it for that. You really can't get any precision, precision at all. And also, like I say, it does. The, these brushes in general do eat product, so I prefer just to use them for blending purposes. Um, if I realised that's what I was just going to end up using the money for that, I wouldn't have bought so many. Um, so the 227 is the pinched version, so this is the one that is so most closely resembles the MAC 217. Um, I really like this. Um, out of the two I actually prefer the rounded one for blending um, uh, out, but this one is great for putting colour in the crease. So when you obviously if you were doing like a cut crease where you needed a more pigment then you wouldn't really want this one but I think for like getting sort of like uh, make, makeup, geeks cre makeup geek creme brulee or a bit of sort of max omega in the crease it's really really nice for that um, the next one I'm going to talk about which I definitely do enjoy is the Lux pencil the 230 this is the only pencil brush I uh, own other than one other I get to later but it's not really usable as a pencil brush so it's the 230 pencil brush this is great for using on the lower lash line for um, uh, shadow Ooh, the only thing I would say is pencil brushes you and I it's nice to be able to smudge out liner with a pencil brush whereas 
I'm, I'm really funny about doing that with this because of the fact that it's not a synthetic hair brush so I don't really want to get it into too much contact with the cream products in case it ruins it um, but I do really love that and I use it for inner corner highlight as well I use it all the time um, the next one I'm going to mention is the 231 which is the Lux Petite Crease I really really love this it's a pointed um, little crease brush which is fantastic for putting colour in the outer V and um, just giving a little bit more definition in the crease um, so I also use this for buffing out the lower lash line so in a lot of ways it's like a larger version oh excuse me it's like a larger version of the pencil brush um, another brush that's like basically an even larger version of this brush so these three are just like small medium and large of the same brush really um, is two to eight looks crease so again um, I just like this for blending if I could if I could only pick out of these if I had the opportunity to repurchase um, the ones that I think are worth having is the, the 230 um, pencil brush I would also use the get the two three sorry the 221 looks soft crease um, for blending out I wouldn't get the 227 again but only because of the fact that I prefer my Real Techniques base shadow brush for all the same reasons I use this for but if I didn't have the base shadow brush then I would want that one too and um, I would also go for the 231 Lux Petite Crease because I think that is definitely one worth having so I hope that was helpful and the next brushes I'm going to show you I think on my body shop brushes so I have sorry about the squeaky chair guys I've got three body shop brushes to show you um, that I haven't already shown you the first one is the eyeshadow brush now I'm absolutely amazed that the writing hasn't rubbed off with that one because these like I say are like I think I, sorry I said this in the first my first video of the series but not in this video but these I've had for over 10 years um, and oh about the Zoeva brushes as well um, they're about the same price as Real Technique brushes and if, if you factor in the fact you can get Real Techniques brushes in the drugstore on sales and in bulk and in sets and the fact that the Zoeva ones are not as readily available and you have to pay shipping and stuff like that so um, they're about the same price these ones are a bit more pricey um, these are, are probably around sort of nine uh, I mean anywhere from like nine to twenty pounds a brush in body shop I would have thought so that they're, they're, they're really they're, they're charging up there with sort of like Mac prices or not far off them and um, so for that reason I, I wouldn't repurchase them again um, the only one that I've really used massively over the years is is this one and to be honest I don't particularly like it when you look at it you think that is going to be like a 217 but actually it's far too dense and hard the bristles there's not enough splay or giving them to, to, to get to use for blending um, I basically use this one for crease and blending work when my other brushes are dirty and I can't be bothered to clean them <laughs> so it's not it, I always choose it last it's not my favorite and um, the other one is a lipstick slash concealer brush I don't use this for lipstick or concealer there's no way that I, I suppose if you had acne you were covering up little blemishes you could use that for concealer when I think concealer I think under eyes and it'd be no good for that for lips, again, it wouldn't be as it's not the sort of brush I like. I like more of a rounded brush. I'll show you the lip brush later. What I use, um, I suppose for concealer around the mouth, if you were going for red lip, it works for. That's probably about the only thing I use it for. I occasionally use it for inner corner highlight, but again, when my other brushes are dirty and I can't be bothered to wash them, or I'm not able to wash them and have them dry in time, let's say. Um, the last one is. Um, uh, the eyeshadow brush sorry I think I've mentioned this but forgot to talk about it so this I use in the same way that I would use the um, Zoeva 234 so I use it for packing on uh, colour on the lid it does work well for that but because of its age now you can see it's just completely lost its shape so again I just keep I just end up using that when my other brushes are dirty um, so for the next brushes I'm going to show you, which I think is the last group I'm going to show you in this video, is my dual um, ended brushes. 
So I just have a few jewel-ended brushes, and they're from various brands, but I'll put them in their own category. Um, two of them are the Makeup Revolution um, brushes, and they came in the Iconic Pro palette. So I have, I have Iconic Pro 1 and 2. Great palettes, definitely recommend those. Um, dual-ended brushes, I'm a bit... I've got a love-hate relationship with them. I love the fact that they're great for travel, um, but at the same time, I mean, how much more convenient is it to take one, two brushes than it is one? I mean, how big and heavy are they anyway? So I don't know about that, but they're annoying to wash because in my head, I'm always trying to make sure water doesn't get into the ferrule, whereas that's just impossible to do with a dual-ended brush. It's not like you can wash it and then make sure that it's always facing down because then the top one's facing up, if that makes sense. So that for that reason, I think they'll just end up naturally lasting lo uh, having a shorter life than other brushes let's say and also um they're just when you, you dry them you ha my other brushes i try and make sure that they're at a slight angle like that so i'll roll the towel up slightly on one hand end and have them like that whereas these you have to have them completely flat to, to make sure that both sides are getting a fair you know getting it fair and when i store them i usually store them in pots like this and when I wash all my brushes I don't necessarily wash the pots but I have to with these and because one brush is always going to be touching the bottom so for that reason I don't think they're particularly sanitary so yeah anyway we'll get on to the brushes so um, these are free with palettes so for that reason you know don't look a gift horse in a mouth it could be worse you could be getting a sponge to applicate everyone hates those um, but they're really nice the blendy side are nice and fluffy and not too scratchy, a little bit scratchy, um, but great, you know, if you're just wanting to uh, do a quick look, you've got the uh, it in the palette there and you just want to get it on. So the flat side is good for packing on colour, I actually really like that for packing on colour and it doesn't soak up a load of product and it works for cream products too. The blender side is a bit small. Um, for blending um, so really mainly I use that on the lower lash line and the bristles are a little bit long for that job so it's not an ideal for me um, brush that side but I really like the packing side um, the next two are both eco tools brushes they came in a set um, so then unfortunately it's rubbed off but they each have a name but it's rubbed off but there's only one set like this you can get from um, drugstores and um, it comes with two dual ended brushes one is a rounded sort of blender um, a little bit bigger than the um, Makeup Revolution one but still not sort of fluffy enough for me um, but I do use it you know especially for putting colour in the outer V um, on the other side it's brother sister is a pinched version which is actually quite nice the feeling of it reminds me actually of the um, body shop one but a little bit uh, a little bit smaller so if you get my drift it's a it's not fluffy it is quite it is quite stiff and um, then you've got the define that's the one that's not necessarily rubbed off completely yet this one's great for gel eyeliner. You could use it for brows, I guess, but I wouldn't use one that's more for brows. And I also like it for putting colour in the lower lash line. I have used it in a corner highlight as well, but only as a last resort when the brushes are dirty. It's not the ideal brush for that. This side is a smudger. I personally like this side for putting colour under my brow bone um, because I prefer um, different brushes for smudging up lower lash line. Um, but it. it it is great for that. It's a con nice conventional shape for smudging out a lower lash line. So, um, Eco Tools aren't the cheapest drugstore brushes, but I think they're worth the money. Um, this uh, is a Urban Decay Naked 3 brush that so came with the Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. The blender side here is nice and fluffy. Um, so it's a little bit fluffier than the Eco Tools one, but not as, ones, but not as fluffy as the Zoeva one. So again, when I'm packing on colour in the outer V, this is lovely for that. The when I'm packing on colour on the lid, I do really often use this side. I actually neglect this side. I forget about it a lot, and it is really good. I actually prefer this to the the, the Zoeva one that I use more often. And this is a QVS brush. I don't really like this brush. Um, I don't know why I've still got it. Again, I just use it as a backup. 
Um, this is supposed to be a concealer end, this is supposed to be foundation end. That to me is far too fat and stubby to work as a flat foundation brushes brush and I personally don't really use flat foundation brushes anyway, I prefer the buffing brush style. So I usually use this for under eye concealer, it has got a bit of a rattle to it now because of its age which is another thing that's off putting and um, this concealer side to be honest I do use for packing on colour um, as as eyeshadow colour but again it's a bit fat for that um, so yeah I'm not a big fan of that brush to be honest um, so I think that's going to be enough for today's video and I'll crack on straight away now and film the next one so keep do hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and you want to see the next in the series take care guys bye